Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at an infinite combo deck featuring the Locust God, a 6 mana 4 4 legendary god with flying, saying whenever we draw a card, create a 1 1 blue and red insect creature token with flying and haste. And for 4 mana we also get to draw a card and then discard, and when the Locust God dies we can return it into its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So the Locust God forms a 2 card combo with Sage of the Falls from Throne of Eldraine, a 5 mana 2 5 Merfolk Wizard saying whenever Sage of the Falls or another non-human creature enters a battlefield under our control, we may draw a card and if we do, discard a card. So if we go turn 5, Sage of the Falls, into a turn 6, the Locust God. Locust God is a non-human creature, it triggers Sage of the Falls, so we get to draw and discard, which in turn triggers the Locust God, creating a 1-1 blue and red insect creature token, which as it turns out is also a non-human, once again triggering the Sage of the Falls, so we can keep repeating this process, and Sage of the Falls is a May ability, so at some point, once we have, let's say, 20 flying insect tokens, we can decline to draw a card with the Sage of the Falls, and then we get to attack with 20 hasty flying tokens and win the game on the spot. So that's the main game plan of the deck, just try and get these two in play and then we can potentially just win the game right away. And to help us ramp into these 5 and 6 mana creatures, we added some green to the deck. So we've got Explorer, Grow Spiral and Uro, which can all help us ramp to potentially play a turn 4 Sage of the Falls, turn 5 Locust God. And that way we get to win the game a little bit sooner. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we also have a full play set of Shock as a cheap interactive spell dealing 2 damage to any target. We also have the full play set of Explorer and Grow Spiral, alongside 28 lands to make sure we can always put an extra land in play. And of course getting to draw a card with these also synergizes with the Locust God, but it also just helps us draw towards the different combo pieces. And then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, which we can also escape out of the graveyard for 4 mana, and that will help us draw more cards, gain some life, and put more lands in play, which are all things we're interested in. And Uro also synergizes quite nicely with Tamyo, Collector of Tales, which can put additional cards in the graveyard with the plus 1 ability, while we can go looking for Sage of the Falls and the Locust God, and then we can use the minus 3 to maybe get some of the combo pieces back from the graveyard. And then we also have the full playset of Flame Sweep as another interactive spell, great against the Goblins deck as it can deal with any two toughness creatures, and it also doesn't kill any of our own flying tokens that we might generate from the Locust God. And we also have two copies of Teferi Master of Time, another 4 mana Planeswalker we can potentially play on turn 3 if we play turn to explore or grow spiral. And this will also help us look for the missing combo pieces, can also interact a little bit with opposing creatures using the minus 3 ability. And we can maybe discard any additional copies of the Locust God or Sage of the Falls that we don't need. And then at 5 mana we've got our 4 copies of Sage of the Falls, which can also help us get rid of any additional copies of Sage of the Falls we don't need, as it also triggers itself when it enters a battlefield and our four copies of the Locust God. And then the mana base, we mentioned 28 lands, can definitely be fine-tuned a little bit more here, but we've got four copies of Fabled Passage, which also ends up in the graveyard to help us escape Uro, alongside five basics, two forests, two islands, and one mountain, one Castle Ventress as an extra mana sink, then we've got eight shock lands with Steam Vents and Breeding Pool, also the full playset of Catria Trium, which we can always cycle for three mana, and then six more check lands with two Hinterland Harbor, two Rootbound Crag, and two copies of Sulphur Falls. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn three Uro, turn four Sage, turn five Locust God, if all goes according to plan. And hopefully that's fast enough. Could be up against goblins. A red deck without a turn one play. Usually points towards that. And there we see the wily goblin. Alright, let's grow spiral here. You can still potentially draw into a shock and play it. Opponent's got to land on top. And no land drop for the turn, alright. Ooh, flame sweep. Do I flame sweep now? 
I mean, I'll still be able to play Sage into Locust God, so might as well. We'll put some upkeep stops here so we can see what the opponent's next draw would be. Yeah, definitely don't want to let them play that for free. They could have sacrificed the Snoop using the Prospector's ability, but the mana would have gone away since we put a stop on their a draw step here. And our opponent's going to have a hard time killing us before we get to combo off. Although I guess it's not impossible if they go Muxus next turn and hit a Haste creature and a Krenko and go off that way. And they're not going to have an easy time killing a 2-5. So I'm liking our chances, but... Just gotta hope Muxus doesn't wreck us. Although if they kept a greedy two-lander, they probably have some good cards in hand. Mountain on top, so if they go for Muxus, one is definitely gonna be a miss. Goes for the Chieftain instead. And now they're just dead. It even rhymes. The goblin matchup between shocks and flame sweeps and then the combo is usually pretty reasonable. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a reasonable hand. Double flame sweep might not be great in the matchup, but we can always draw Sage of the Falls to discard it or to ferry. And against an elf deck. Flame sweep should be pretty good. And we even drew both combo pieces, so now we just need lands. I'm definitely okay casting a flame sweep here. Before they get to untap and maybe have enough mana for collected company. Probably not gonna fetch with passage, because I would gladly still draw lands. This could be a company plus Bolasa Citadel deck, as we see Gilded Goose as well. Well, we can flame sweep again here if needed. Or I can play Sage of the Falls. I mean, playing Sage probably lets me win next turn with Locust Gods. So that seems relatively safe. And there's a land, can discard Uro. And then if they don't kill Sage or disrupt my hand somehow, we should be able to win next turn. They're one mana short of playing a Bolas a Citadel. Maybe if they had Phyrexian Tower, they could have comboed off. Double Visionary, draw two cards. And there we go. It's basically Splinter Twin combo, although maybe a little bit more expensive. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got the Super Ramp Hands with Double Explore Spiral Uro. I mean, all these cards replace themselves, so this hand's gonna look a lot different in a few turns. I'll try it. Let's see what we're up against. Selfless Savior. But no Lurus as companion, so... Not sure if it is a Spirit Dancer deck or not.
All right, it is a Spirit Dancer deck. Flame Sweep would still not be enough here because they have the Savior to protect the Spirit Dancer. So we're just going to keep ramping, hopefully drawing to the combo to go over the top. And then for now, I guess we'll start with Uro. There's Sage, that's nice. And then I can still grow Spiral at instant speed here. Maybe I should grow Spiral now in case I draw into a Shock. And I guess it's worth a shot. And no Shock. So, not too far from escaping Uro. Probably just gonna play Sage. I wouldn't be able to Uro plus Sage, so let's just play the Sage then. And if we draw any lands, we can still explore. Flame Sweep's not going to do much anymore. Alright, so hopefully we're not dead. Another Sentinel's Mark. Opponent's gaining a lot of life here. Aegis to tap down Sage. And do they have one more aura? Salt footing. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this looks like a keepable hand. I might have to fetch up turn 1 mountain, so turn 2 I can shock. Although then I won't be able to play Grow Spiral if I draw it. But that's probably okay. I guess I might also be unable to play Uro on turn 3 if I fetch a mountain. So we'll wait here, maybe our opponent has a deck where we don't need shock and then I can fetch an island. I guess turn 1 elves will definitely get a mountain. And then we'll be able to Uro on 3. Wouldn't mind drawing more land, so I'll hang on to the Fabled Passage for now. Probably ends up getting an island. So a blue-green deck featuring a Lenor Elves. Another Breeding Pool and another Shock. Now I don't have a second mountain that I can fetch up with my Fabled Passage, so I won't be able to go Uro into Shock. Maybe it's fine to just Shock the Elves and hold on to the Uro for now. Or I could get lucky and draw into a red source and still be able to shock afterwards. Yeah, you know what. All right, didn't get lucky there. But if I draw land, I could also just play Sage next turn. Tamyo can go looking for the Locust God. Could be a collected company here. It's gonna be an Uro instead. And again, I'll wait until my turn to fetch with a Fable Passage, because I wouldn't mind drawing a land. Breeding Pool untapped. Maybe a Grow Spiral here, who knows? Alright, so getting an island means this is untapped, so I can decide between Tamyo plus Shock or Sage. I guess since we don't have Locust God in hand, I prefer Tamyo plus Shock. So let's start with Shock. Make them use the mana, maybe if they have a counter spell we can move to our second main phase and then play Tamyo. 
but it's just a gross barrel. And then go to fetch first for an island. Could also mine us on Fable Passage, maybe do that next turn if we need a land. For now, the Locust God is what we want. And we can also escape Uro if we want to do that instead. Six mana. What's it gonna be? Casualties of War could be pretty painful here. It's gonna be Crisis for four instead. Alright, so we've got options. I might want to just plus time you looking for the Locust God once again. And then play Sage of the Falls. Yeah, I guess I don't hate that. Seek and find. Still no Locust God. Do I still want a Sage? Or do I want a Uro instead? Probably still Sage. And then we'll discard, I guess, Fabled Passage, play attacked Steam Vents. And we'll see if our opponent can get rid of any of my permanents. Assassin's Trophy? Alright. Could have been worse. And a Chupacabra for Sage. It's too bad. So now it's just down to Uro to dig us towards the combo. Start by escaping. I guess we'll just play another Uro. And then I think I decline on the Triome here, because I might end up cycling it. And pass. Can our opponents escape Uro? They need one more card in Graveyard. That'll do it, although they have too many Swamps in play at the moment. Ooh, Hostage Taker, my Uro. That's unfortunate. Although, if they replay Uro, it's gonna be the one that ends up in the graveyard instead of the 6-6 six, six that stays in play. It's a fairy. Let's start with Uro again. So even though Taimyo didn't draw us into a Locust God, it still filled the graveyard nicely for our Titan. And then, yeah, once again I think I decline. And then we'll just play Teferi and plus. Alright, there's Locust God. Probably don't need Flame Sweep anymore. And now do I play Triome? Alright, I guess now I'll play it. Maybe it gives me enough mana to escape Uro and play Locust God next turn. So missing a Sage of the Falls, we should still have a decent amount left in the deck. Two copies, plus Taimyo could get it back from the graveyard if we draw the last Taimyo. So we'll minus. I guess I was better off just plussing to ferry there since it still would have survived. And we would have gotten to draw and discard. Although Locust God plus Explorer is not a bad two card hand. So we'll start by playing the Locust God. Ooh, 
Frilled Mystic. Ouch. Am I still attacking with Uro here? I mean, my Teferi's gonna die anyways, so might as well. And then... I can play another Uro, I can play Explore. I guess we'll Uro since it's more expensive. There's another Sage. Alright, so now I need another Locust God. Opponent gonna escape their own Uro. That happens. They've got a lot of swamps for a deck that's playing Frilled Mystic. They have to send at least the Frilled Mystic at the ferry if they want to kill it. Because now we get to plus. And get rid of the Triome. Slow down. And a Paradise Druid. Alright. I think we still have three Locust Gods left in the deck to draw. And there's one of them. So I don't have enough mana to play both this turn, do I? I'm very close. If I draw into a land that's untapped with Sage, I can still play Locust God afterwards. So it makes more sense to play Sage first. Although they did seem to have a response here, so they might have a removal spell. Well, I'm gonna go for it. Twenty-two cards left, so it would be just enough to make a lethal army. Eliminates Uro, eliminates can kill Sage or Locust God. Wow. And we're gonna end up winning with just enough cards in library here. Couldn't have been any closer. I only have to click once, because we only have one card in hand to discard, so... We're going even faster through the combo here. Just have to be a little bit careful once we near the end of our library. Well, this game definitely could not have been any closer. And I mean, even if we didn't have enough cards in library, I could have still just killed them over the course of two turns, presumably. Unless they have a sweeper. Four cards remaining. Three cards. And then one more after this. I guess we already have 21 tokens here, but let's go for all the cards. Decline. Attack for 22. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We've got both combo pieces, a little bit of ramp. Just gotta hit some more land drops and we'll be fine.
could have main phased the growth spiral if we expect some counter spells that could have been reasonable. Right, let's play Uro. And then next turn we can already play Sage of the Falls. Hopefully followed by the Locus God. Dovin Security. A card I haven't seen in a while. So I don't necessarily want to fetch with a passage because I don't want to thin out the deck from lands when we want to draw lands. Alright, could even play the Locust God, but going Sage first I think makes a little bit more sense. Because they might not see the Sage as a threat as opposed to the Locust God. So... I guess now I can fetch... I'll grab... doesn't matter too much, an island. And then... Don't want to show them the Locust Gods. Probably don't need Shock in the matchup, even though we could keep it up here. And yeah, if they're not careful, they might just be dead next turn to the two-card combo. It's going to be a Revitalize, main phase, to pick up Acuity. Let's see if they have a Thought Seize, maybe, to follow it up. Nope. Alright, time to combo off. Get to see that nice animation. And I will have to click a few times to go through the combo, but... Plenty of cards in library to make enough insects here. That could have been one concern if our opponent gained, like, 20 life. And we didn't have enough cards in library, then we couldn't kill them in one attack. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And, I mean, this hand could be okay. We've got some interaction with Shock and Flame Sweep, double Uro to draw some cards. But we're missing all the combo pieces. Could be a matchup where Shock and Flame Sweep aren't particularly useful. So I think I can still take a mulligan here. Alright, this is a little bit better. So I probably have to keep all three lands. I might just get rid of Uro, keep Grow Spiral into maybe a turn three to Fairy. And then... Shock has some additional interaction. Thought Erasure probably takes away Teferi or Grow Spiral. Well, we can always draw an extra Spiral or Explore here. Opponent appears to be on Sultai Control, and we did draw the Explore, so that's nice. And I can keep up Shock for what it's worth. And Tamiyo is going to be nice, preventing any future Thought Erasures or Thought Seizes. So they're probably going to take Tamiyo here, leaving us with the Fairy. If they don't take Tamiyo, I can just play Tamiyo minus and get back to Fairy if that's what they take instead. Ponan does take the Fairy, interesting. And passes. Maybe they have a spell pierce here, who knows. No spell pierce. Let's get back to Fairy. That way if they kill Tamyo, we still have a Teferi. And now Thought Erasure or Thought Seas are no longer gonna work. As our opponent's about to find out. Tamiya does have a passive ability. Alright, so let's plus first as our opponent concedes. Yeah, Planeswalker passives from War of the Spark. They uh, always get you. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's pretty awkward. No green, double Locust God. This I can keep. And then, what do we bottom? I guess one of the ramp cards here. 
Let's bottom the explore. Because I want to be guaranteed a turn 3 to ferry. Opponent on the red green with Huntmaster, so a dinosaur deck. Alright, played the ferry. Wanna get forests. And then probably don't need to get mountain with Uro. We wanna make sure we have double blue, double green. Just get another island. Then I could minus on the Huntmaster to prevent any turn 3 Ribjaw Raptors, but I think I'm just gonna wait here. And probably just plus again. Put more stuff in the graveyard for Uro Escape. We're getting pretty close. It's gonna be another Huntmaster, which plays into our Flame Sweep. So that's probably going to be better than escaping Uro, even if we have the option to. Ooh, never mind. Rotting Regisaur. That is a bit of a problem, isn't it? They can give it haste and attack the fairy, at which point I guess I minus on the Regisaur. Although it still leaves the Regisaur in play. But I don't want to minus on the Huntmaster if the plan is to flame sweep. So we'll plus. I guess I can get rid of the Explorer and then still go Uro for 3 mana plus flame sweep. And Uro is slightly better than uh, Explore as we get to gain 3 as well. And then I guess it's okay to fetch here. And do I want to Flame Sweep now? I guess I do. Opponent does still have to discard to the Regisaur. Discards commune with dinosaurs. Next turn we'll be able to escape Uro, which can block the Regisaur, hopefully. Still missing all the combo pieces. Time's up. Another flame sweep. Well, my opponent's discarding a card each turn. We're potentially drawing a card each turn, so I don't even have to trade here if the road is clear for Uro to attack. And at 26, we can afford to take 7. And if they keep Register on defense, they're slowly gonna lose their entire hands, so I'll take seven. It's gonna be a Ribjaw Raptor, which we can still attack into. And we'll untap. And then we'll main phase the Growth Spiral. In case I draw Sage of the Falls or Locust God, I can still play them. And then we can still end of turn Scry with Castle. Tamiya is interesting. Playing Tamiya here is maybe not the best since she's just gonna die right away. So let's just uh, Scry with the Castle instead. 
opponent will get to keep one card. I guess if it's an Ember Cleave, I could be in trouble. As we would be taking 20 damage. Almost enough to kill me. And yeah, they discarded an Ember Cleave, so they might have a second one in hand. It's gonna be a Galta instead. Alright, so they had two good ones. Now Galta. I can't really attack into with my Uro. So, yeah, we could still die here. Trample means no chomping with tokens from the Locust God. Suppose I can Tamyo get back to Fairy and minus on Galta. So I'll just take my draw step. Yeah, I think that's the play. I am Tamio. It is an honor to meet you. No tail should And yeah, I can't really minus on Galta now. I need to wait until the opponent's turn. So for now we can just plus. Flame sweep's not doing much for me. And I guess I'll play out Steam Vent since I'm minusing to Fairy instead of plussing. And then do I wait for them to attack? Or do I minus on Galta now? Could matter if they have an Ember Cleave. If I minus on Galta, they're forced to attack with Raptor and Regisaur to Ember Cleave me, although then I probably die anyway. So I guess we let them attack first. And then it's maybe easier to keep my Planeswalkers alive, because we get to see which creatures go where. Yeah, this has been an interesting game. Thought we were super far ahead when we had an Uro and they had a Regisaur, but Galta and Ember Cleave definitely changed the equation. The Rotting Regisaur was also a little unexpected. Just Galta attacking. Well, that's an easy minus. And then, how should I start my turn? Got a few different options. Having a backup to Ferry to minus again on Galta is useful. So I probably start by plusing Tamyo. And then what do we name? Probably the Locust God. To the library. That's a swing and a miss. We'll plus with the Ferry. Could also scry with Castle. Maybe I do attack with Uro. And then I can escape another Uro play to Fairy Minus again. Don't hate that plan. And then no scry with Castle. And wait to activate the Fairy until after we draw with Uro. Find another Tamyo, that's actually not bad. Opponent takes it. I guess we'll still plus the Fairy here. Play back up to Fairy. This isn't my first time being the hero. And then I probably play Uro first. And then uh, plus the Fairy again. And keep Tamyo, which can get back to Ferry for next turn. Can minus on Galta again, so it's the same board state as last turn where they just attacked with Galta. Hopefully they didn't draw Ember Cleave. And we finally found Locust God, so we're getting closer to the combo. Just Galta attacking. Could technically also take 12 here. I do have enough mana to play Locust God and Sage if I draw both. So maybe that's fine, and then we can just plus with the Fairy, maybe minus next turn. 
And if they cleave me, of course, I can still respond with the fairy. Just a land. There's Sage, so I think we did it here. 24 cards remaining, so that's plenty. All right. So close game. We needed all those Teferis to deal with Galta. Tamiya being able to get back to Ferry was also pretty nice. And the mana advantage that our Uro created for us definitely came in handy. So we've got six tokens, need two more. All right, that should be enough. And we can even click on the little number to select all the tokens at once. All right, sweet. Not bad, not bad. So our Locust God combo deck performed pretty well. Definitely nice to have a two card combo as opposed to all the three card combos we featured in recent weeks. Makes it much more streamlined and easy to assemble. And the Locust God is still a reasonable card by itself, even if it's a little pricey at six mana. So sometimes you can also just win games by ramping into a Locust God and making a bunch of tokens without having to rely on the Sage to go for the infinite combo. And then Uro is kind of the glue that holds the deck together, giving us a nice late game in the more grindy matchups, and also helping us gain a bit of life against some more aggressive decks. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.